watching the Sun Belt Conference on ESPN Plus. We welcome you inside Jones Edwards Stadium in Huntington, West Virginia, the home of Marshall's Thundering Herd. And on this second day of September, it is where Marshall opens the 2023 season against the invading Great Danes from the University of Albany, who enter with a game under their belts and, more importantly, a victory. Greetings from Huntington, along with former National Football League All-Pro Carl Lee and Marshall Hall of Famer, our wonderful crew. I'm Mark Martin. We are delighted to have you with us for coverage of this evening's game as Charles House's third Thundering Herd team will go against the Great Danes under 10th year head coach Greg Gattuso. Carl, great to be with you. What a setting here for college football. One team has played a game, another raring to go. Well, and I'm sure that Marshall's super excited about being ready to play. I came down and watched them practice the other day, and I'm I'm telling you, they are ready. All right, and as a former defensive back, you got to deal with this guy if you are Marshall Alexander the Great, Roy Alexander, Jr. from Fort Myers, Florida. 75 catches last season, averaged 54 and a half yards per game, and off to a great start. Six catches, 58 yards last week, and that went over Fordham and two touchdowns. One of the things that Marshall's going to have to do, they're going to have to defense him meaning they're going to have the coverage in, and if they're playing man-to-man, -man, they got a sense of pressure. If they're playing coverage, it's got to be focused on him. Now, Marshall certainly has great defenders. You saw Owen Porter, Micah Abraham, and last year defensively, they were superb. Carl ranked nationally in several categories, rushing defense, interceptions, total defense, scoring defense, and passing efficiency defense, just to name a few. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know that you have a you have a solid, a solid defense defense and that defense will cause a whole lot of problems today I can guarantee you that getting set for the coin flip down below you Albany winners last weekend at home over Fordham, great way to get the season started, and boy, what a big confidence builder! It, it was a big win, and they and they and you could you could just tell by the score how good this team feels about that win and where they're going to take it. Marshall under Charles Huff, his third season opener, Albany one on the has road the two toss, years ago and like, to against defer their choice Navy to the second half, and then last year here at home against Norfolk State. One of the things that's really good about Coach Huff is his his ability to develop players. I think that's his biggest strength, and he's coached a number of positions. Well, the sun is still out here at the moment, and Greg Gattuso in his 10th season guiding the U Albany program. Prior to becoming the Great Danes head coach, he led Duquesne football for 12 seasons, 137 career wins. He's a former Defensive line stand out of Penn State, helped the Nittany Lions win the national title in 82, and he's been a lot of places. I think you guys have something in common. He played with Kurt Warner, the running back Kurt Warner, <laughs> the college football Hall of Famer there at Penn State. You played with Kurt Warner in an all-star game here in West Virginia. Absolutely. <laughs> one, of, one of the state's best players ever. That's, that's how I view him. And there is... The third-year man of the Thundering Herd, Charles Huff team, coming in here off of last year's closing five-game winning streak, came to the Thundering Herd program off a national championship with Alabama. Former standout at Hampton, many stops, including the NFL with the Buffalo Bills, Tennessee State, Maryland, Western Michigan, Mississippi State. So you got two coaches that uh, have uh, national championships. One is a player and one is a coach. They know how to do it. That's for sure. Both of these coaches know how to win championships. All right. So it's going to be Marshall receiving the opening kickoff here in Huntington. Season of 2023 underway. Jaden Harrison, who has been dangerous, returning kicks throughout his career at Marshall. Gets it out there for the herd, and that is where this one will begin with Marshall owning the football. Nice return there for Harrison, 19 yards. So good blocking there that looked like that could have broke at one point. So Cam Fancher, and he's the owner of that. Winning streak as a starting quarterback. 
And right out of the gate, give it to Rasheen Ali. And Ali off to the races. A flag is out. Rasheen Ali, the distance. <laughs> That speed and their ability to run the football will make a difference, but this is going to come back. Doing the run. Holding. Well, my streak is over. I've done two high school games <laughs> this year where a team scored on the first offensive Senior play, and I thought it was going to happen here. Yeah, here you go. I mean, this is this is broke. I mean, he's out of the gate. There's no reason to be blocking behind it. And I think maybe that's even a hold there. You don't need it. This guy's good enough, fast enough. He was going to break that anyway. Is a first down for the Thundering Herd officially, officially a 21-yard pickup. Ball at the 48. Ethan Payne, who ripped off a first quarter touchdown a year ago. Young man out of Polka nearby in the backfield. Fancher to throw. Trying to get it out there to Chuck Montgomery. Montgomery was running a quick out there, and he kind of got his feet tangled up and, and fell to the ground. He would have been open. Red shirt sophomore. Montgomery in motion and gets it from Fancher. And a nice piece of running there by Chuck Montgomery. Marshall's ability to run the football is going to take care of the clock. That's going to, that's going to pay dividends to them. And, and you look at this. Blocking is solid. Everybody's there. If, if Marshall continues to block this way, they're going to run the ball all day. Third down play, a little sidestep there by Payne. First down, another flag comes out. Holding. Looks like it Offense, might be a number 52. 10-yard penalty. Third down. Marshall 9 and 4 last season. Closing with a 28-14 victory over UConn in the Myrtle Beach Bowl. There is Ethan Payne, 45-yard touchdown run in the opener a year ago against Norfolk State for that first touchdown of 2022. Fans are trying to pull the Great Danes offsides. Fancher can run with it. He's dangerous. Now spots a man. Great diving catch by Keaton. And, and I tell you what, that was great patience by the quarterback. Like that was that was special. It ended up being incomplete, but he he was very patient with it. Now I'm an old wide receiver. I always think this <laughs> is a catch. They caught it. <laughs> <laughs> Got ahead of myself there. John McConnell, outstanding punter as a freshman, and he'll pin the Great Danes inside the 10. And now we're going to get a chance to see quarterback for U Albany, Reese Poffenbarger, and this kid's sensational. Yes, he, he and he and he will run the ball for you. You know, so Marshall will have to be very careful and pay attention to him. Poffenbarger. Last week in the win over Fordham, 23 of 40, 253 yards and four touchdowns. But again, as you mentioned, he's not afraid to take no. off and run with it. So no. we got two dual threat quarterbacks yep. in this game. Got the ball into the hands of a lot of different receivers in that season opening victory. And when you throw the ball around, when you throw it to multiple receivers, that makes it really difficult for the defense. If you can try to focus, if you got one guy, you can focus on him. But when you've got multiple players that can catch it, it makes it a little bit more challenging. Illegal 
substitution. Albany. That foul will be declined. We will put the ball at the dead ball spot. First down, Albany. All right, now. Put the ball down there. Inside the 10. And Poffenbarger ready to go to work here. Handed off on the first play and absolutely nowhere to go for Faisal Aiden. He's a Utah transfer. Aiden, Aiden will be a, a, a hard a hard target for for the great names to be able to block. He's quick off the ball. He's tough. He's strong. He'll be a big factor in today's game. Owen Porter. Outstanding player. Grew up here in the area, played at Spring Valley, Valley High School. He makes the stop. Hoffenbarger looking to throw and now going to take off with it. And will slide down. Ball is loose and another flag comes out. Eli hit. Neal has taken it into the end zone. And I think that's going to come back. I think that's going to be a personal foul. Late hit. So far, Marshall, Marshall's hurt. Have, they are hurting themselves. They had a fine offensive movement. Penalties. Here we are on defense. Personal They're foul. stopping them. Late and hit. next thing you know, defense. we got a penalty. 15 yards from the end of the run. And an automatic. First down. Now that will give the Great Danes a first down. And Coach Greg Catuso saying last week's game against Fordham, it was a good night, good game in all three phases. One thing he wasn't happy with, penalties. And penalties kill you no matter where, what side of the ball, no matter what team. It will hurt you every time. Coach Charles Huff in his third season and earlier this week became a father for the third time. Look, Jessica giving birth to Sun Blaze. Again, that front of Marshall just bottling things up. Elijah Alston, number two, leading the charge for Marshall. It's going to be a challenge if the Danes are going to actually run this ball up, up, up inside. I just don't know if they're going to be good enough to handle Marshall's front four. Marshall under the guidance of a new defensive coordinator and Jason Seymour had been at Georgia Tech. Second and ten. Hoffenbarger flipping it out. And Fisola Aiden there with the catch. Not much. One of the things that I, I saw in practice was the, the Marshall defense running to the football. That's important. That's a play. That swing pass is a play that you have to be running to the ball to get there. Marshall has positive, positive on defense. They'll get there. Third down play. Hoffenbarger floating it. Aiden with the catch. And Aiden has got the first down. One of the things that you can do if a team's, if that offense is, or defensive line is getting off the ball, screen passes. Another look. So you got that defensive line getting up the field. Now you run that screen pass. That's always going to get you in the secondary. Eli Neal, outstanding linebacker, tracked him down, but not before it was a pickup of 11. Ball is loose. Poffenbarger finds it. Will be a loss on the play. Bounced right back into his hands. They were lucky there. Poffenbarger, a year ago, the Colonial Athletic Association's Rookie of the Week six <laughs> different times. <laughs> I would make the case he's a pretty special guy. <laughs> Threw for 2,999 yards last year. 24 touchdowns. Pressure comes, and down he goes. 
Well, it was started by Ty Quez Legs, the defensive tackle, 300 pounder, and then Eli Neal there to help out the case. And an athletic 300 pounder. Yes, he is. He's, he's quick, he's fast, he can get off the ball, and there you go, you see it. They're going to have to throw more screens. The Danes are going to have to play. They're going to have to throw more screens to slow this defensive line down. If they don't, they're going to keep coming. Third and 22. They'll play it safe here. Keep it on the ground. Not much running room there as well. No, I don't I don't think you're going to run up in the middle of Marshall's defense. I think that front four is just too good. Kane's going to have to think about throwing some more um, screen passes to slow him down. So they will kick it away here. Tyler Pastula. Senior. Average 35.8 per kick last week against Fordham. Now Keaton is back there and Keaton will gather it in and be taken down at the 21 yard line. You're watching the Sunbelt Conference on ESPN Plus. That was 1991. Marshall football started playing here at Jones C. Edwards Stadium opened up with New Hampshire. New Hampshire member of the CEAA with this U Albany team. So Marshall back on offense for a second time. And well, we saw him come out of the gates quickly, but a penalty negated the great run by Rasheen Ali. Yeah, the penalties ended up hurting that drive. I, to be honest, I think Marshall will take this drive, consume the clock, and end up with, with the touchdown. 8.26 to go here in this opening quarter. Cam Fancher fires it out. And the catch made there by Demarcus Harris. University of Kentucky transfer. Cut 30 passes for the Wildcats. Junior. Secondary, they, they, they really attacked that play. It was just a little quick hitch with a little little quick screen. Uh, they were able to get out and make that tackle. Three go wide to the top of your screen and a little confusion there with Fancher and Ali and down goes Fancher. I believe that they both ran into each other on the handoff and then that gave the defense an opportunity to, to be able to penetrate and make that play. Right back now to the original line of scrimmage. So you look at third and 10 here. They may be proving me wrong. <laughs> Offensive coordinator Clint Trickett. A well known name yeah, when no, it comes to offense. No doubt his father, Rick. Great offensive line coach out to Ali and Ali loses the handle and the ball goes out of bounds. Question here will be whether or not that was a complete pass and he fumbled it out of bounds. He has control of it there and he just he just bobbles it. He loses it. It's out of bounds that. I think if where he where he bobbled it, it's still going to be fourth down. Take a look here. Tomorrow Edwards is our referee for this first ever meeting between Marshall and U Albany. And an injured Great Dane. So we'll take a break here at Jones C. Edwards Stadium. You're watching the Sunbelt Conference on ESPN Plus.
during the return. Illegal block in the back. Return team number 13. Spot foul, half the distance to the goal. First down, Albany. Charles Hop fan his Marshall Thundering Herd. And the Great Danes from U Albany even. Talking things over, breaking the action here in Huntington on ESPN Plus. Welcome back to Jones Hilbert Stadium in Huntington, West Virginia. Brand new video board here, Carl Lee. It is something to behold here. I don't think I have played <laughs> with a board as nice as that. You were in a few stadiums in your day. <laughs> yes, I've been in a few. <laughs> All right, so we see you Albany back on offense. Reese Poffenbarger and his crew again operating inside the 10 yard line to start a drive. Poffenbarger. And he'll just unleash it out of bounds. Looks like they had a little bit of pressure there and along with Mark, I think they're playing a, a, a combination of some man-to-man -man and um, zone on one side. I'm not sure if that's to a specific receiver yet, but that's what it looked like to me on that side. Jared Ambrose is the offensive coordinator for you, Albany. Goes way back with this young man who is the quarterback for the Great Danes. Talked about how tough he is and what a competitor he is this time he'll hand it off and again the green jerseys smother the white clad great dane running back that was nate larkins larkins a bentley transfer playing here in huntington tonight he's from huntington new york <laughs> had 12 carries last week 29 yards and caught a pass Third down and seven. The Great Danes have got to find a way to get some good field position so that they're not always backed up trying to drive the whole length of the field. Scott Hausman is the center. Play clock down to the wire. Poffenbarger in trouble and down he goes. Getting him around the ankles there was Isaiah Gibson, number 99, the redshirt junior out of Springfield, Ohio. And I do not even believe this was a blitz. I, I actually believe this was just the front. They know maybe they did bring one inside linebacker. When they're throwing the ball, Marshall is not giving them any time to look downfield. Well, as we came into this one, we talked about the superlatives from a season ago with the Thundering Herd prevent unit and picking up right where they left off hunting situation and Keaton will be great field position here for the herd absolutely they they need that they, they need to take advantage of this they've got to get some kind of points on the board I was thinking for sure that after the first drive that next drive I thought they were going to be able to drive down they've got to put some points on the board because the great names are giving them opportunities. You're watching the Sunbelt Conference on ESPN Plus. There are some great game themes coming up this season at the Journal on September 23rd. Virginia Tech comes in to face the Thundering Herd as the faithful strike the June with alternating green and white sections. The following Saturday, it's homecoming as the Herd takes on Old Dominion. And then in October, fans can stand up to cancer with the Herd Strong theme. These game themes help to show some of the many ways that Herd fans say we are. Come and be a part of it. Marshall with the football, and it is Fancher finding Montgomery. Bangs ahead, first down yardage for Chuck Montgomery. Looks like Marshall's trying to speed up the tempo a little bit. Montgomery, a season ago, big game at against App State. 109 yards receiving. We'll fake it to Ali, fired out there to Montgomery, but 
That play was stopped. False start. Offense, number 55. Five-yard penalty. First down. Mark, that's one of the problems when you're speeding up the offense, getting set, staying set, and not anticipating that quick count. So that'll happen every now and then. Marshall cannot keep having this happen to him on these drives. They've got to get in and score. Head coach Charles Huff trying to lead Marshall to its 600th victory in program history here on this Saturday evening, the first Saturday in the month of September. College football has arrived. No score here between Marshall and Albany. Fancher finding Montgomery again. Ball came loose. A quick out route, and again, I think he fumbled it on the way down. Kate Connolly tied in there, falling on it. Connolly, number 83, a man who came into the program out of Central Michigan. Good quick out. He catches it, knee down, bobbles it. He's got he's to hold on to that. Montgomery, been a busy guy here in the first quarter. Yep. Fancher fires out. Jaden Harrison with the nice catch and run. Just that little fake held the defense once he got the ball in his hands. Spin. Good run, good throw, good catch. And now they'll get it into the hands of the tight end, Conley. Redshirt sophomore. Had 11 catches there at Central, and Fancher wants to speed things up. Trent Holler snaps it to him, and here is Ali. Fighting his way to the 15. This will be a this will be a big third down. They need to get this first down. Keep this drive going. Ali working those feet and he may have gotten it. Good hard effort there by Rasheen Ali. Comeback player of the year candidate. He's that kind of guy that just won't give up. Like he, he he'll work hard as he has to. Marshall's going to go for it here. Machine again missed a lot of action last year, but fought back. Gets the call again. Nope, they fake it and Fancher fires in the direction. Uh, Caleb McMillan and it's incomplete and Marshall will turn it over. I believe Marshall has to start scoring on these drives. I think because if we don't do that, if if, if they don't score, we're gonna it's gonna be a problem going forward. I like the idea of the play fake, yeah. trying to pull the backers in and having the opportunity to throw the slant route. In this got it. it has to be complete. Fancher, a magician there, as he picks it into Ali and guns it toward the end zone. Albany's defense under the direction of first-year D coordinator Bill Nestled, who's been with the program a long time, and they've really shored up that defense. And we keep Marshall out once again, and we stay scoreless here. Poffenbarger and company back to work. And Poffenbarger's got some running room. Nice run there by Poffenbarger. We talked earlier about his ability to run, and there, there we saw it. Fourteen-yard pickup for Poffenbarger, who came to U Albany from ODU. Pass caught in a hard hit there by Marshall defensively. J.J. Roberts. Catch was made by Brevin Easton. Easton just ran a quick slant. He was the inside receiver. Easy throw, easy catch. He got hit a little bit, but it wasn't enough to shake the ball. He had two catches in the win over Fordham. Scored a touchdown. J.J. Roberts, by the way, playing his first game 
back here in the area. Grew up in Ona. Played at Cabell Midland High School and spent time in the Wake Forest program before coming to Huntington. Jacory and Anderson makes the stop there for the Thundering Herd. Anderson, a player that has waited a long time, dealt with some injuries. So here we are, third and one for Poffenbarger and the Great Danes. A big third down here. Fires it out, and the catch is made. Jackson Parker had a couple of grabs last week against Fordham, and a first down catch there. They finally have been able to get into across the, they're heading across the 50-yard line, heading into Marshall territory. Park out of Kingston, New York. 6'1", 200-pound junior. So fresh set of downs here for Reese Poffenbarger. And time has expired here in this the first quarter. <laughs> opening quarter of play. And we are scoreless in this first ever meeting between you, Albany, and Marshall. Back for the second quarter. You're watching the Sunbelt Conference on ESPN+. Plus. Glad to have you back with us here on ESPN Plus as we get set to be in quarter number two. No score in this first ever meeting between the Great Danes of the University of Albany and the Thundering Herd of Marshall. Your thoughts on that first quarter, Carly? I thought it was, I thought both teams were a little sloppy. I was expecting a little bit more out of Marshall, but we'll see what how it goes from here. Meanwhile, Reese Poffenbarger and the Great Danes with the football to start this second quarter and Jackson Parker makes the catch and Parker a little slow Looks like he might be down oh, no actually uh, forgive me it's not Parker it's Roy Alexander young man we featured prior to the game he's not the guy you want to lose slowly heads to the U Albany sideline. He's jogging without a limp, so maybe he'll be right back. Second and seven. Offenbarger gives it off to Aiden, and Aiden's got some room and a first down. Nice piece of running there by Aiden. That may be the biggest run they've had today, I believe. Steven Dix out of Orlando. Good blocking. They got the edge. Receivers out there might have held a little bit, but it, they got away with it. So Faisal Aiden with a nice run there and we have an injury or an equipment situation, but coming off is Isaiah Gibson. They saw with they saw Aiden with the 14 yard pickup. He stays in the game. Another first down here for U Albany. They're fifth here in this first half. Aiden again on the call. In 2022, Marshall, if they scored, if they scored in the beginning, they scored first. They are seven and zero against their opponents. If the opponents score, they're two and three. And right now, U Albany trying to become the first to dent the scoreboard here in this game. Offenbarger slings it. Catch made. Another nice pickup. Gets it into the hands of Easton. 
And first down yardage. Marshall was playing cover three on that play there, and they were able to hit him right in the perfect zone. Reese Poffenbarger, just a very confident young man. Another 14 yard gain. 14 seems to be the number. <laughs> And it off fan slamming ahead is Nate Larkins. Crept up there by Owen Porter. Mark, I think those corners and wide receivers are going at it out there. They're slinging guys around on the ground. The officials are talking to them. Um, I'm, I'm, my fear is somebody's going to get a flag here soon. It's a gain of two for Larkins. Houseman over the football. For the Great Danes. Easton in motion. Hoffenbarger man across man. the middle. Nice little slant and first down yardage once again. Marquise Dietz with the catch. Sophomore, five catches last week, 46 yards. And it looked like they were playing man to man here. Yep. He got inside. You can't let him inside if you're going to try to cover him in man to man. You got to got to protect that inside. Stephen Dix got him on the ground. How about Dietz? He was somewhat recruited by Poffenbarger. <laughs> they were on the scout team together at Old Dominion. <laughs> Poffenbarger, not just an outstanding quarterback, pretty good recruiter. Poffenbarger with Owen Porter coming at him. Guns it toward Dietz in the end zone. Second down coming up. Marshall had pressure on him and he wasn't able to get his feet set, so he ended up kind of throwing it sidearm. Owen Porter, number 55, the Lombardi Award list, the Bidneric Award list, the Bronco Nagurski <laughs> Award list. Is there anything he's not on? <laughs> sixth season. Talked about going through a sixth summer camp. This past August. That's 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 an amazing feat is, uh, at its own. Hugh Albany wants to talk it over. Obviously, Tonight, they saw something they did not Albany. like. It is their first. But Greg Gattuso and his crew will talk it over. Well, the Thundering Herd meeting up with Charles Huff and company. Watching Sunbelt Conference football on ESPN Plus. Coming up on ESPN Plus, we've got more women's soccer headed your way. Tomorrow at 1 o'clock, the Thundering Herd women's soccer squad will try to stay unbeaten on the season as they welcome the Gardner Webb Bulldogs to Hoops Family Field. Then after a road trip to Pitt, the men's soccer team will take to the pits Thursday at Hoops to take on the High Point Panthers. That's at 7.15 p.m. Be sure to log on and watch the herd along with all of the other programming you'll see only on ESPN+. Second down play, Poffenbarger in trouble and gets rid of it. Looks like Marshall had switched to some man-to-man -man there on the goal line. You know, Carl, we talked to the coordinators for U Albany and Jared Ambrose and just talking about Poffin Barger. One thing he said he likes working with his hands <laughs> yes. and just a toughness, <laughs> gritty. He yes. never wants to lose. They're trying to punch it in and take the lead. Season opener for Marshall. U Albany with a game under its belt, third and eight. Big play here. Offenbarger and Sam Burton's got him around the ankle and down he goes back at the 20. He held that too long. He's got to throw that away. If no one's open, he's got to throw that away at least to give the, the field goal kicker an opportunity. He's fine here. He's fine here. Now at this point, you got to let it go. Now you put your field goal kicker in two to have to make it a little bit longer. 
John Apolko Jr. The holder is the punter, Tyler Pastula. And no, no good. good. We stay scoreless here in Huntington. Well, you always look for those many victories within a game. Marshall just got one. They just got one. And the other side of that is how how devastating is that to you if you've made that drive, ate up the clock, and then come out of there with nothing. That's tough. That's tough to come back from. Check this out. Marshall Analytics social media. So Marshall will take over offensively. Break here in the action down on the field as we stay here inside Jones Edwards Stadium, along with former NFL All Pro Marshall Hall of Famer Carl Lee, our great crew on ESPN Plus. And Mark Martin, delighted to have all of you with us. Second Saturday in the month of September. College football season first big weekend. Cam Fancher ready to go to work and shoots it out. Nice catch made by Talik Keaton and then Keaton with showing a little toughness there. Yeah, he, he did at the end of the run, but this was a dangerous throw. They, they got a block just to save because that guy was going he was he was heading for an interception there Four yard pickup for Talik Keaton on the pass from Fancher Give it to Ali And Rasheen Ali has a first down for Marshall Ali is really patient when he gets the ball. It almost looks like he's jogging. He's just waiting for that uh, that alley for him to be able to cut up into. I think there's times that defensive coaches wish he was jogging. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to Ali again. And well, again, just those great cuts. And a lot of those cuts that you see, that comes from that boxing background that he had as a youngster. And you, and great, great feet is something that is very difficult. If you can develop great feet, man, you can play. You know, the feet and then throw in the vision. Larry Walker Jr. is down on the field there for Albany. The Albany football program with what they call a leadership council. And it's all about showing the leadership not only on the field but off and just a select group and that young man who they are tending to at the moment is one of those Walker out of Aliquippa PA great football town yes sir no score here between you Albany and Marshall you know when you start talking about leadership you know when you start talking about sports leadership is a critical piece <clears throat> Indeed it is. Going to break any action here. We will return to Huntington in a moment. You're watching the Sunbelt Conference on ESPN+. Plus. You're watching the Sunbelt Conference on ESPN+. Plus, home of the thundering herd of Marshall. Second season as a member of the Sunbelt Conference. Young fans in attendance here tonight wondering when one of these two teams going to put points up on the board I, I actually thought this would be a high scoring game or a quick pace game that would have scored I'm surprised that we're this late in the second quarter with nothing on the board 837 remaining before halftime second and three Fancher fakes it to Ali, looking, floating, and the catch. Well, 
You had Talik Keaton there diving for it, and also in the vicinity was Daryl Simmons out of Stephen F. Austin. Yeah, they were playing a cover three, <clears throat> and that was a that was a dangerous throw there. We were throwing into coverage there. Third down and three. Hand it to Ali, and Ali grabbed from behind. Nice defensive play there. Bradley Wiki, I believe, on the stopper was at Amir Hall. I believe it was Amir Hall. A Hall, young man out of Richmond, played 24 games for the Spiders, two interceptions. He was on the field still. Freshman All-American team in the spring of 2021, so McConnell has to kick it away here for Marshall. Jackson Parker gathering in the punt. I like, I, I, I'm curious to see where where the Danes go with this. If they, if, they're, if they continue to throw the ball or if they're gonna try to go back to running the ball because I think their opportunities to throw the ball might be a little bit better than what their what the matchup is from their offensive line versus Marshall's defensive line. 46 yard punt by McConnell. Now in his second season with the program out of Morgantown. So back to work will go Poffenbarger and the Great Danes and get it out into the hands of Easton. Well, they are deep at wide receiver. Yes, they are. And, and I'll tell you one of the other things that I've noticed. Those receivers will block because a lot of these plays require them to have to block to spring the other receiver open. And they're blocking in space, which is very difficult. Offenbarger overshoots intended for Easton again. J.J. Roberts there on the coverage. He floated that one a little much. Kind of got away from him. Offenbarger, speaking of lists, talked about Owen Porter earlier. He's on the Walter Payton award list. Just that name means a lot to me. <laughs> yes, it does. Third and four. Poffenbarger, quick release. Easton with the catch. Trying to get to the outside. Bottled up. Nice play there by the thundering herd. I think Marshall was in a man-to-man -man there, and that's usually very difficult to, to be able to throw that type of a pass into a man-to-man -man coverage. Keyshawn Brown out of App State makes the tackle for the herd. Yep, it makes it very challenging because there's somebody on you already and they're just fighting through the blocks and going to make that tackle. So it's a punting situation. Quick series there for the Great Danes. Tyler Pistola in the punt. Gets it away. Keaton. Will pull it in. And around the 35-yard line, we break away here in Huntington. Someone trying to put points on the board. Marco always gathering a crowd. Thundering hurt back on offense with 6.31 to go here in a scoreless game. Season opener for the Thundering Herd, Cam Fancher. Brings his tight end Conley in motion, and here's Rasheen Ali trying to pick his way, and not much happening not much there. Happening, no.
The Danes have actually, they have stepped up that defense. It looked a little shabby in the beginning, but from the from that first series after that, they have pretty much controlled Marshall. Well, last year, the defense allowed 34 points a game, so they've really tried to flip the script. They came to play there against Fordham and playing tight defense now, as is Marshall. So Fancher unleashes the pass into the hands of Harris for a first down. And he's asking for them to continue to throw him the ball. And I think most receivers will do that once they get one ball caught. Of course. <laughs> I speak from experience. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Huff looking on. Launching his third season as the Thundering Herd head coach. Fancher fakes to Pressure. Ali and good job by Fancher getting away and then finding a man. Nice catch made there by the tight end Conley. That's a situation there where Fancher does a great job getting away and then yes. your receiver helping your quarterback. Absolutely. Good footwork, way to keep the play going. He's eyes downfield. Nice, easy throw. Good catch. And then Ali powers ahead. You go back to that <laughs> Fancher play, and that's uh, maybe uh, Ben Ashford, the strength and conditioning coach. That's a weight room play here because <laughs> had that ball out there. Yes. <laughs> a little dangerous, but uh, showed some great strength there. Machine Ali. Moved at three yards. Ethan Payne checks in for the Thundering Herd. This is an important drive for Marshall. Conley in motion. Tight end split out. Fancher looking and drills it in the direction of Caleb Coombs. He was looking, it seemed like he that was his that was his second read. I think he was looking toward the sideline. <clears throat> Yeah, I think his initial, I think his initial eyes were out to the sideline, and then he came back there and wasn't, a, it wasn't available to him. Bill and Kelly Time was out. on the coverage. Albany, it'll be their second. Time out here on the field. Marshall and U Albany duking it out. Watching the Sun Belt Conference on ESPN Plus. Defensive battle here in Huntington with 4.17 to go in the first half. No score between U Albany and Marshall. Good both, moves there. Both defenses have been playing well. The young man's getting a lot of airtime. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> he, knew, he knew where to park himself for this game. All right, third and seven from the 35. Ali back in the game, and he gets the handoff. And Ali goes down. Hugh Albany's Ori Jean Charles out of Spring Valley, New York. He's on that leadership council, and he makes the stop. Injured Great Dane. Yep. I'm going to assume that Marshall's going to go for this since uh, I think the field position allows them that opportunity to ball on the 35. I believe that is Ghassan Shahade, sophomore defensive tackle, 6'5, 266. Time of possession, U Albany 15 27, Marshall 802. Marshall total yardage leader at the moment, 134 to 76. But no score. There is head coach Greg Catuso. And how about that, though, Carl? We talked about earlier that the, he played with uh, Kurt Warner, a West Virginia native. So he was a defensive guy. So going against Kurt every day. <laughs> I couldn't <in> imagine. 
Yeah, this does not look no, good for not. Shahade. You never like to see that. You know, in the defensive coordinator, Bill Nestled, who had been with the program and then gets the promotion to be in charge of the prevent unit, he talked about, you know, you go against a quarterback like Poffenbarger every day, and that just helps it you right help. there. Absolutely. Because you're used to seeing that in practice. Well, fourth and seven, and head coach Charles Huff has elected to have McConnell come in. He stands at the 49. See if they can pin them deep. The ruling is a touchback. No, it was close. First down. Pretty good job by McConnell. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, under, I see what, what he was trying to do. You put him back, you, you, you back him up. Yeah, his foot's on, his foot's on the line. It's a touchback. Yep. Yeah, as soon as he catches it, his foot steps on the line and he tries to pitch it out. Didn't work for him. Deani Hill there. So Poffenbarger going back to work here. Drive starts at the 20. Under four minutes to go. In Renninger, big tight end in motion. Poffenbarger looking and gets rid of it. And Jacorian Anderson applying pressure. This is his 29th game at Marshall. I think Marshall's liking the matchups. I think that was man to man again there. And I, with the free safety, I think they're liking their matchups outside right now. Second and 10 here for the Great Danes. Coming off a 34 to 13 win over Fordham last weekend at home. Now on the road and in a 0 0 game. Boy. Close <laughs> yeah, to being picked off there by the thundering herd. Jacoby Henderson. Illegal formation. Five men in the backfield. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Now penalty going against the Great Danes. And about five people in the backfield. Yeah. I think what's happening is getting that, that tackle getting in the backfield. Bothenbarger straight back and fires it, and the catch will be made by Caden Birdie. Birdie had one grab in the victory over Fordham. Sophomore of Malton, New Jersey. One of the all time greats. Marshall football history, Chad Pennington there checking out the action. Won a few games in this house. Just a few. <laughs> Son Cole, member of the team, and here's Poffenbarger getting away from the pressure. But they'll still manage to get him to the ground as he comes up short. Coming up to make the tackle. Antoine Smith had three starts a year ago, including the bowl game. Marshall, it is their first. Good pressure again by Marshall. They're, they're continuously getting him rattled, and he's got to run out of the pocket. They make him short for the first down. Football is at the 27. Work down situation. And Charles Hub started things out two years ago with the great win in Annapolis, Maryland over Navy. And it was special because it was his first game as a head yes. coach, but special in the fact he did so in the state where he grew up. Right. 
and you can't you can't beat that. You know, you can't there's nothing you can compare to that. Personable coach last season they opened the campaign here at home against Norfolk State. Of course he played at Hampton. Kicking it out of there is Pastool and boy that takes Khalid Keaton back and yes. Keaton will be taken down. What a kick. That was a kick that they actually needed. Fifty seven yarder. He hammered that one. Yeah. And, that, and clearly any time that your your returner is, is going backwards. He was not expecting the ball to be kicked that far. And give credit to Keaton there. Boy, he never took his eye off of no, it. That was dangerous. And trying to track down that fly ball. <laughs> yeah, but he, he couldn't let it go. That's for sure. We started his career here at Marshall against VMI and returned a punt for a touchdown. So Cam Fancher and Marshall pinned deep. Starting this drive at the 14. Bancher shoots it out. Jaden Harrison with the catch and the nice move and gets the first down. Good out route. It's an open spot in the zone. Fancher to work again. And over on the far side. Look like. Looked like cover two to me on that one, trying to make sure they didn't get anybody deep. Brian Robinson makes the grab. Transfer out of Florida State. Fancher. Quick release. Grab made by Caleb Coombs. You go boom, boom, boom. You got Harrison. You got Robinson. And now Coombs. Getting everybody in, in in the game. It was a four yard gain. Ali in the backfield. Fancher flicks it and Conley. Now four different players have cut a pass on this drive. And it's clear that they're playing zone. They're taking advantage of the zone, catching the ball, getting out of bounds. And it'll bring up a third down here. Two deep safeties. Three wide to the top of your screen. Single receiver below with Ali in the backfield. Watch a deep route down at the bottom. Fancher looking for his man and tight coverage there. And now the crowd wanted interference to Marcus Harris. The coverage. The defensive back here in the booth with me. <laughs> I'm a defensive back, so I, I really need to see how I need to see that a little bit closer. <laughs> You've been in those situations a time or two. A few. I don't see it. I don't see it. Not that you would be surprised by that. <laughs> Amir Hall there on the coverage. Fancher gives it to Ali and Ali fighting and Ali is stopped. I like I think the fan base is getting a little frustrated here I think. They give it back to the Great Danes with 109 showing on this first half clock. Oh boy they were just going along picking those passes yes, to yes. different receivers and it bogs down and again you can look up on the scoreboard and say no score what's wrong well there's two pretty good defenses yes, out here are. Yes, they are. all right so Poffenbarger gets another crack at it here he zips a pass and grab is made and then a tackle is shed by birdie birdie with first down yardage takes that one to the 31 but a 17 yard gain that trips route that trip set that they had before forces Marshall into a cover three and then they can find places in the zone to hit it 
Ball loose. Poffenbarger alertly picks it up, and now the pursuit is on by Burton, and he flicks it towards the end zone, oh. and the ball falls to the ground. Jacoby Henderson on the coverage. He's throwing, it, it looks like he's throwing this ball side on. Oh, he is. <laughs> Holding offense, number 77. 10-yard penalty, first down. It was 10 against 10 the there, intended for Jackson Parker. Therefore, the 10 off, 10 we do have, have a flag on the play here. In a big hurry there by Sam Burton. Had a holding penalty. Offenbarger again has to elude the rush. Out of bounds. Tell you what now, they got the head coach. Charles Huff got nicked there. He's, he, I think he's tough enough to get uh, up. <laughs> a little athletic. Too. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Still got a little athleticism in it. Former lineman. He was very nimble <laughs> in his playing days. Second and 18. Poffenbarger. Guns it. That one is short. Oh. Well, now we may. Have a penalty coming up here against Marshall on the coverage there, Josh Moten. I truly think that was after the play. I think the ball had already gone over the receiver's head and, and the DB's head, and then the contact was then. I could be wrong, but that's what it looked like to me. Pass interference, defense. The ball we place at the spot of the foul, automatic. First down. Take a look here. Uh, he may have got. He may have grabbed a little bit early. He may have grabbed a little bit early. It didn't see. It didn't seem that way to me when I first saw it. Well, first down takes the football to the 29 with 30 ticks to go. Hand off to Larkins. Larkins Marshall had a touchdown called back Timeout. by Rasheen Ali right out of the gate. It is their final of the First play it of the game offensively. Seconds. The Great Danes, they missed a field goal. And right now trying to at least get a field goal attempt here. Hopefully, you know, I would think the Danes would be, that would be the motive, would be just to get on the board. We got a little break here with this call. Better field position. Yeah, he was early. He definitely was early. I, it didn't seem that way when it was a regular play, but when you see it from the end zone, he, he was definitely early. There were a lot of officials in those white jerseys <laughs> on, on the Albany sideline. Yeah, fans in the stands enjoying themselves here on a beautiful Saturday evening for college football. Evening football in Huntington, it's always been special. Yes. Second down here. Trips down here at the bottom. Often Barger lets it fly, looking for his man out of bounds. Firing it in the direction of Levi Wentz. And Wentz was another young man that Poffenbarger talked about. And he listened to him leaving ODU and coming to U Albany. And Wentz was a defensive guy. And it was Poffenbarger talking to him in practice. Said, well, you ought to, you ought to think about switching to defense. Wentz had one catch last week. Third down, 10. Actually, a year ago, the like, opponents to convert on only 44 of 187 third down attempts. Timeout. 
Marshall. It is their second of the half. It will be 30 seconds. Marshall wanted to talk things over there. Jason Seymour, defensive coordinator, his first game clock season operator. with the program. Please reset the Question game clock to 19 seconds. 18 seconds. seconds. It's One, third and 10. Nine. Are you trying to stop them from getting a field goal? Because this could be a long field goal for them here if they get nothing. The question is, what, what are the Danes trying to do? Are they trying to get in the end zone? Because I would, in the thought process I would have is I'm probably thinking about maybe trying to come after. But then at risk, there's a risk of getting, getting the ball over the top. Yep. He can bring the house and maybe yeah. make the field goal situation a lot more difficult. Polko pacing, ready when called upon, the junior kicker. Offenbarger was getting Thank them you. all set. And now we're ready to go. Offenbarger bottled up, drifting back, and let's loose of it. So that will bring the Polko into the contest for his second attempt, and will be Pastula as the holder. Stephen Minnick is the long snapper. Most important three guys on this kick. Good snap, good hold, good. and the kick is good. And with six seconds remaining in the first half, you Albany has struck first offensively and lead it three to nothing. And how about uh, Coach Gattuso going up, giving his kicker a big hug? <laughs> they missed one earlier, so great feeling for that young man as he nails a 46-yarder. That's a good leg. Jaden Harrison, the deep man for Marshall. We'll see what they do here on the kick. Harrison took one to the house a couple of years ago at Florida Atlantic there in Boca Raton. And they'll squib it. Gathered in on the near side. Smart play. They didn't want to kick it, kick it deep to give him the opportunity to run it back, so they just would give him a little pooch kick. Yep. Sean Salas, reserve tight end, making the grab there. So the football at the 41-yard line. Four seconds to go. Fancher fakes it to Payne. Fancher in trouble and gets out of bounds, but that will do it. Well, it took until the six second mark of the second quarter 
for somebody to score. Charles Huff and his thundering herd heading into the locker room trailing you Albany of head coach Greg Gattuso by a count of three to nothing. Back with our halftime coverage, you're watching the Sun Belt Conference on ESPN+. Beautiful shot of Jones C. Edwards Stadium. Huntington, West Virginia, halftime here in the season opener for the thundering herd of Marshall entertaining the Great Danes of the University of Albany. And with six seconds to go in the first half, U Albany gets on the board with a field goal. 46 yarder by John Apolko. That is all the scoring in this first half of action. Of course, great defense on both sides of the ball. When you talk about great defenders for this Thundering Herd team, certainly a gentleman you can speak of is senior linebacker Eli Neal. Preseason All Sunbelt Conference selection. He was honorable mention All Sunbelt a year ago. Outstanding young man. Wonderful personality came into this game with 282 career tackles, three interceptions, had 98 tackles in 2022 and just cherishing every day. Carl Lee in his final season as a thundering herd football player. And you look at this young man, he's six foot, he's 226 and he's a middle linebacker and he is athletic. I mean, he, you know, the idea of what a linebacker is, a middle linebacker specifically, you have this picture, this big, hard kind of guy that's kind of just a tough guy, but not really that athletic. This guy is a guy that can get from sideline to sideline and can cover and can get back in the zone coverage. He's a guy that can do everything for you. And as you watch him play and I had the opportunity to see him in a winter workout under the guidance of Ben Ashford. Uh, this young man is incredibly, incredibly strong. Well, part of that is that hunger to be great. And I think he has that that drive to be that kind of a like as we call it a dog on the field. He wants to do that. He knows that's in the weight room. That's running. That's doing all the things that you can do beyond practicing. Well, that defensive unit keeping the Great Danes off the board until just six seconds to go, but they do have the lead. Here are the Sun Belt standings from a season ago, and in the East Division, Coastal Carolina and JMU finishing at 6-2. and two. Marshall lost to Coastal, defeated James Madison, the Thundering Herd of 5-3, and three, first year in the Sun Belt. App State, Georgia Southern, Georgia State, and Old Dominion followed. And the preseason poll, again, Marshall at number four. And that's something that uh, they weren't real happy about. <laughs> and, yeah, I don't, I, I don't see how uh, Coach Huff would ever be comfortable with anything other than number one. I don't right. see that ever going to happen. Yeah, so, again, the hunger there to obviously, you know, prove those doubters wrong. So we look at the – poll for the preseason in the East. James Madison guided by Kurt Signetti, a West Virginia native, App State. Guided by Sean Clark, a West Virginia native, Coastal Carolina. And then you have Marshall, Georgia Southern, Georgia State, Old Dominion there on the East side. The West Division, Troy. The preseason number one, followed by South Alabama. Marshall will travel to South Alabama this season. Louisiana, Southern Miss, Texas State, Arkansas State, and Louisiana Monroe, ULM. So, again, you've got uh, some pretty good football here in the Sun Belt. Excellent, excellent programs. Excellent programs. And, and you, you start talking about a, 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 an off week. <laughs> you get in that conference, you're not talking about it. There's nobody that you can really truly have an off week with. Well, certainly... A long way to go before they have to start worrying about that right now. Yep. The discussion in the <laughs> locker room is all about this U Albany team. Let's take a look at the slate in 2023. Next weekend in Greenville to meet up with the Pirates. Virginia Tech pays a visit here on the 23rd after an open date. And then that Sunbelt Conference play will begin with Old Dominion invading Huntington. Then it's off to 
Raleigh Tobacco Road to meet up with NC State. Georgia State also on the road. James Madison will come to Huntington. That will be a Thursday night encounter. Back-to-back -back road games with Coastal and App State. And then it will be Georgia Southern paying a visit off to South Alabama and close it out on Thanksgiving weekend with Arkansas State. So great schedule indeed. Great home schedule and certainly some wonderful challenges on the road for Charles Huff's third team. And I think he's he's planning for that. He's trying to get this team ready. And I think the hardest thing for him to be able to do is just to get them to stay focused the whole time. And we'll see how that goes. All right. Halftime here in Huntington. Three nothing. The Great Danes on top of the thundering herd of Marshall. You're watching the Sunbelt Conference on ESPN Plus. Inside Jones Stanford Stadium halftime here between Marshall and U Albany three nothing game. We talked about that schedule for Marshall this season and there are some great game themes coming up this season at the June on September 23rd. Virginia Tech coming in to face the herd as the faithful strike the Joan with alternating green and white sections. The following Saturday, it's homecoming as the herd takes on Old Dominion. And then in October, fans can stand up to cancer with the herd strong theme. These game themes help to show some of the many ways that herd fans say we are come and be a part of it all. Back in Huntington in a moment, three nothing game between the herd and the Great Danes. Beautiful sky on opening night here in Huntington, Jones C. Edwards Stadium between the Great Danes of U Albany and Marshall. Second half coming up in just a moment on ESPN Plus. You're watching the Sun Belt Conference on ESPN Plus. Marshall kicking off to begin this second half to you Albany and the visitors in front three to nothing and the first kick for Cameron Lake and uh, Carl just some scenes from that first half for Sheen Ali first play of the game takes it to the house but it comes back it comes back I think that that really hurt the momentum of the whole first half for them Good defense by Marshall throughout Tyquez legs and Eli Neal there often barter ever dangerous they bottled him up and again all we saw was defense that whole first half you Albany had an opportunity to put the first points on the board of course defense being played well with the white jerseys as well and they finally got it down the field and they would get a field goal of 46 yards from John Polko and now the Great Danes looking to add to that lead. So face all Aiden losing his helmet on that first carry. Maybe it's a cramp. Yeah. yeah. You're going to have to come out of the game either way, right? Yes. <laughs> I, I, and I'm actually shocked, believe it or not, that they weren't cramped. Some kids weren't yeah. cramping up prior to the half because it, it was hot. And then that turf is even hotter. So it's usually about 10 degrees hotter. You know, the great work in this day and age, and it just seems like it just gets better and better with these strength and conditioning oh, absolutely. programs, certainly the athletic trainers. The knowledge of athletic trainers is unbelievable S strength and conditioning all the information now that is new um, is amazing and effective if young kids get into that that could help you get a chance to go to, to college to play it play at this level Greg Gattuso coming out to check on his running back Aiden the Utah transfer coach, coach Gattuso playing there the Penn State with West Virginia native Kurt Warner and as I saw Coach Catuso 
him out there. You know, Kurt was pretty good when he went to Penn State. We know that he was even better because he, he, he didn't want to have that guy tackle I him. Want him to tackle me now. <laughs> Second down and ten for Reese Poffenbarger and the Great Danes of U Albany. Poffenbarger. Well, the pressure came quickly. It sets up and smart QB. And, and Marshall starting the half off with pressure right away. Yeah, they were in his face. He had virtually no time to survey anything. Right. And 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 those little bumps that they're giving him, that's impact for that quarterback. He's going to remember those. So that that affects his uh, throwing ability just because he remembers getting hit. Third and ten. Offenbarger guns it and a great leaping grab made by Jackson Parker for the first down. And they were playing man to man there with the free safety over the top. Good coverage, just a great throw and great catch. That's good ball there. Can't cover any better than that. He, he went up and got it. Last week they had 11 different players catch passes. Tonight just five. Parker, his third catch of the game. And in trouble. And again, good job by Poffin Barger getting away from Alston. Outside the pocket and the ball I think there's a question if he got out of the pocket or not. He, you, if you can get out of the pocket, you can throw it. But if you stay in that pocket. Uh, let's see. Elijah Austin there with the pressure. I'm not sure he got out of the pocket. And there was no receiver in that area. Second down and 10. Was not a good call there. Handed off here to Larkins. Surges ahead for a few. Bring up third down. I think these third and longs are hurt, hurting both teams. It's because they're not getting these big plays. And you put yourself in a situation with third and long, and man, that's tough to make. Larkins gained three. U Albany, three of nine on third down conversions, and the pass is caught again. Good job there on the reception by Birdie. Nice little glance route right there, and really good throw. Goes up, uses those hands. Yep. He got inside that safety. H1 Smith brought him to the ground but not before a fresh set of downs here for you Albany. Poffenbarger looking over the situation. Handed off to Larkins and Larkins powers ahead. The Great Danes are, are really, really looks like they're in, in a mode of trying to control the ball, eat up that clock as much as they can. Well, you know the message coming in, no doubt you want to hang around. You yes. Wanna, and they have done that to this point. The gain of four there for Larkins. Marshall in that great defense. They can come up with a big stop here. Looks like they could be in some man-to-man -man here. Offenbarger has time. Yep. Unleashes. Catch made. If you're going to play man-to-man, -man, you have to keep a guy from getting inside. You must, fight, you must force that ball to be thrown outside. Parker hauls it in and moves those chains once more. Great 
Coach Huff. From his vantage point, that was a nine yard pickup by Parker. 14 of 23 is Poffenbarger, 119 yards. And get a fresh back with his hands on it. That's Griffin Woodell for the first time in a game out of Glen Falls, New York. Good blocking up front. Most of the, again, playing man to man. Easy for the receivers to block them. Backs be, are able to make yardage. Woodell just had one carry in the win over Fordham. Did have an eight yard reception for a touchdown. Give it to Waddell again, and he's got the first down. So he takes it inside the 20. New Albany has really created a good tempo in this drive here. Owen Porter checks out for Marshall. Mike Green is in, redshirt freshman. Well, taking this second half kickoff. Is U Albany and they operate in the red zone now. Reese Poffenbarger escapes the pressure, throws wide open receiver in the end zone. Touchdown, U Albany. That is a busted coverage there. There's no way you can be that open. Jackson Parker hauls it in. And Poffenbarger just showing that great escapability. Yep, and he was wide, and his receiver was wide open. There's a Palco. To see if he can make this a 10 to nothing game. A stool of the hold and the kick is good. In 2022, if Marshall was losing at halftime, they are one and two. At, at you know, in the win loss category, that is the situation we've got here. We're back in a moment here in Huntington. Ten nothing game here as U Albany takes the second half kickoff and marches 75 yards. Capping it off. I think that is by far the best drive of the day. You know, Reese Poffenbarger to Jackson Parker, 19 yards. And at the moment, a few may be stunned here in Huntington. Marshall it takes one good drive, though, to get right back in it here. And good return here by Jaden Harrison. Now Harrison, he is dangerous each time he takes it. Let's go back to this drive, Carl, and Poffenbarger. He was excellent. Finds Parker there. Uh, 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 what, uh, what happened here in this drive, they threw the ball against some man-to-man -man and some zone, and they were able to get some good runs. They hadn't been able to do that earlier in the game. And brought Woodell into the game, and then, uh, as you said, maybe just broken coverage broken there. Broken coverage there. But an impressive drive. 11 plays, 75 yards, and it takes 525 off the clock. Okay. Fancher and company now go to work for the first time here in this second half. And, you know, Fancher has that ability, and he can change a game in a hurry with his feet as Absolutely. well as his arm. Absolutely. Games five there. It was a mix-up on, on the handoff on that last play, though. Not sure if it was the back or the quarterback. Fancher guns it out. 
catch made. Good effort there trying to stretch it out is Demarcus Harris. Get to that first down marker. I'm not sure. I think he may be just a tad shy. Just a, just a bit short. And quickly, Marshall gets that first down. Ali bursting through. That O line can give him any kind of a hole. He's he's going to make a play for you. Now back to there, and Fancher shoots it out and into the hands once more of DeMarcus Harris. Marshall moving quickly. Yeah, tempo seems to be up a little bit now. Harris now the team's top receiver with four catches. See there, they like to call that a stack there with those receivers to the yep. top of the screen. Here is Fancher faking the handoff and Fancher slides down. First down, thundering herd. Good play. I, I, I want to say that he may have changed that call because he switched the back. <clears throat> Good fake. Now Fancher into the hands of the tight end. Conley has gotten active in this game. It's Conley's fourth catch of the contest, the tight end. That's always a good matchup because he's usually going to be against the linebacker. Turbo mode right now for the herd. Flick it out and a diving effort there. Great catch by Harris. I have to catch my breath here. <laughs> yeah, the tempo, the tempo. It's caught the Danes off, <laughs> off, off balance too. It's got them off balance. They're not even getting set. Fake it to Ali. Get it into the hands of Chuck Touchdown. Montgomery. That's the tempo that I'm thinking that Marshall needs to be at. Chuck Montgomery from Cam Fancher and Marshall on the board for the first time in 2023. Good fake. Good throw. Way to stay up. Stay in bounds. Touchdown. Yards the after the catch? The yep. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Those were very productive. Is under review. Well, now we may have a play under review here, Paul. I think he stepped out. Is that what you're saying? Well, they'll discuss it. While they do so, we will break away here in Huntington. Marshall with some much needed momentum. We'll see if it's a 10-6 game or still a 10-0 game when we return. <laughs> Albany on top of Marshall, 10-6 here. With an extra point coming, and there's another yeah. look. And Montgomery. It looked good to me. Stayed in there. Yeah. So that much needed momentum that Marshall thought they had <laughs> will remain. And Reese Veerhoff drilling the extra point, coming off a nice freshman season. Out of Columbus Grove. Now Marshall, after getting down 10 to nothing, have a little bit of a wake up call, perhaps. And the tempo of that last series was really different than what we had seen early. It seemed a little sluggish early on. That tempo right there was really something that I think the Danes just weren't ready for and couldn't stop. Him. 19 yards, Cam Fancher to Chuck Montgomery. Cameron Lake will kick it off.
That was an eight play, 65 yard drive. Takes 238. Rasheen Ali with the nice run. Get the tight end involved, Kate Conley. A great mix of run and pass and two different individuals. Everybody played a role in that series. And then Montgomery. Fought off the would-be tackler. Charles Huff with defensive coordinator Jason Seymour. Eyeing the situation now as the Great Danes of the University of Albany. U Albany back to work here. Hand it off to Larkins. Montgomery with that TD catch. Four grabs, 51 yards. That was Larkins. Seventh carry. That's 13 on the ground. Second and eight. He went to Larkins again. He finds a hole. First down for the Great Danes. Looked like Marshall had some pressure coming. Looked like because they looked at on the, on the edge, they were uh, playing some uh, man to man. Yep, it's tough when you're playing man to man and you're sending people because there's if that back can find a gap, he's gonna he, he's gonna make some yards on you. Micah Abraham, J.J. Roberts got him down. Hoffenbarger in trouble and will take off with it. Can hurt you with his feet and slides down. Hoffenbarger with keeper. Just about picked up another first down. Yeah. And looked to me like that was cover three and he couldn't find anybody in the holes, so he just tucked it and ran. Hugh Albany with 15 first downs to 12 for Marshall. Second and four. Give it to Larkins, and Larkins carves his way for a first down pickup, I believe. I'm just shy. Bring it back a bit. Here's Larkins. It looks like he may be cramping up a little bit. Now Marshall tough. Third down situations a season ago. And look for a big stop here. Now the running back runs into his own player, and I believe they got a stop. I don't know if it was so much of a stop as as I think you all, but he messed that play up. Fourth down and one. And Jose Lopez was the ball carrier. And Looks like the Danes going to big play here. They're going for it. Poffenbarger takes off with it and will find the end zone. Fourth down play. <laughs> Not what I was expecting. Not a first down, but a touchdown. He, he broke a tackle. Once he broke that tackle, it seemed like it was an all-out blitz, man-to-man -man coverage. There's nobody left. Goes 54 yards. And he has been as good as advertised. Yes, he has been. Apolko going to put the Great Danes back up by 10, and he does as he swings that leg into it to make it a 17-7 count. 
First half, we had a, a ton of defense, and here we go. Reese. With the offense going. Yeah. Reese Poffenbarger goes 54 yards. You're watching the Sunbelt Conference on ESPN+. Plus. Marshall had gained the momentum on a touchdown pass from Cam Fancher to Chuck Montgomery. But U Albany comes right back. Six plays, 75 yards, six, 319 off the clock. And penalty marker will come out here as the kickoff sails out of bounds. See now what, whether or not uh, Marshall can answer. <clears throat> Well, Arkins had that nice nifty run there. Kick kick out of he left the game Kicking here on team. fourth and the ball we placed at the 35 one yard line. following another nice First run by Poffenbarger. And then this is the touchdown run as he just takes yeah. off fan and agrees the defense. And it's a great fake because there were guys still looking for the running back if he gave him the ball and he pulled it and ran. And Fancher and company. Just looking to answer here, and they did so quickly there a moment ago when they found themselves down 10 to nothing, but now right back staring at that 10-point deficit. Fancher to Ali, and Ali got away. He was about to go down, and Ali, full head of steam into U Albany territory. What a play by Rasheen Ali. Part of that problem there is he has the opportunity to pull it. And I think at that point, the back grabs it and keeps going. Fancher ends up being a great play. And Fancher fires in traffic. And the catch is made for another first down as Conley hauls it in. Conley having a big night. He's having a big night. I like this tempo, even though this is kind of slowed down a little bit just here. But I like the tempo that Marshall's going at at this point. Ali picked up 25, Conley 27. Fancher to Ali, finds an opening, finds the end zone. Great, great blocking up front. Good blocking up front. He makes the right cut. Receivers are blocking downfield. Touchdown. And now Bierhoff to try to make it a three-point game once again. Bierhoff puts it through. You, know, you go back to this drive, Carl, and you think that Rasheen Ali is dead to rights and just never gave up on it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. There it is again. Well, you, you preach it every day in practice. Don't give up on the Don't play. Don't give up on the play. Keep your feet moving. He's doing that all whole day long. And give it to Ali again. And that big grab by the tight end, Conley, right before that. Ali into the end zone. I think this is the tempo that Marshall wanted to start the game out. I think it's taken them a little time to get there, but I think they've gotten there now. Three plays, 65 yards. Smoke clears from the <laughs> halftime or the touchdown celebration. And the Marshall players are getting the fans involved into it now. Now you're at home, opening night. <laughs> Nothing better than that. And you have been, and I don't mean to say this, but I'm going to, you've been in a dog fight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have been in a dog fight all night long, and you're still not out of it yet. No way. 
This team of Greg Gattuso coming in here on a mission with a great quarterback and an outstanding cast around him. Poffenbarger hands it off, and here is Easton. Flag comes out. I was going to say, I, I, one of the receivers, I couldn't see that number, but I thought they were holding it. It was a three to nothing game at halftime. Those three points weren't produced until just six seconds to go. Another look here, Carl. I don't know if that, that didn't really show us the holding. I don't know where the holding was. Nevertheless, backs the Great Danes up to the 17 and finding an opening again, but then they managed to close it off. But tell you what, Larkins is a load. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's, not, that's not who you want to see. And, and I can tell you now, the guys in the secondary, when he breaks into the secondary, they do not want really, they don't want to have to hit that. Again, out of Huntington, New York, and trying to help his team pull an upset here in Huntington, West Virginia. Following the penalty, still a second and ten situation, and Poffenbarger fires to Easton, and he's popped, and the ball is out for an incompletion. Looks like that was a double slant. He threw it to the inside receiver. And a good play by the defensive secondary. One of the things that people don't realize about playing defensive back is you got to use hands. Like when, when the receiver gets the ball caught, you got to start swiping. Third down. Poffenbarger in trouble, and down he goes. Sam Burton, Owen Porter with the disruption. Man to man on the outside, and everybody was covered. Got a, black, a backer coming. He has no time to even try to read it downfield. Sam Burton, six foot, 253 pound senior, came into this game with 100 career tackles. Keaton deep at midfield. Marshall will have good field position here with 23 seconds. Left here in the third quarter. So three nothing at halftime, ten to nothing as the Great Danes of you, Albany, came out and took it down the field, 75 yards. Marshall got it to 10-7 and down 10 again at 17-7 on a big touchdown run by Reese Poffenbarger. And then Rasheen Ali scores for the herd, and now Marshall with the ball down three. Fancher ready to go to work again as time winds down here in the third. Fancher wants to keep it. Miss tackle. Good job. And Cam Fancher, excellent athlete. Yes. He was a triple jump state champion in the state of Ohio. Hard-working young man. And that time the of the third has quarter. come to a close here in the third. 17-14, Albany on top of Marshall. Away we go to the fourth. 
You're watching the Sun Belt Conference on ESPN Plus. A spectacular night for football in Huntington, West Virginia. We welcome you back inside Jones Edwards Stadium as we get set for the start of the fourth quarter. A slugfest between U Albany, the Great Danes, and the Thundering Herd of Marshall University. 17 14, Marshall with the football. Shoot it out into the hands of Coombs, and Coombs makes the grab. He came in motion from the far side, Carl. Yes, and that's what that does for the quarterback. It allows him to read the coverage. Somebody goes with him, it's man to man. They stay, it's zone. He knows where to throw the ball. First down pickup. An 11 yard gain. Coombs in motion again, and they'll try it from the other side. And it works well once more. They're staying, they're staying in the zone, and they're, they're taking advantage of it. Of Leesburg, Virginia, Caleb Coombs. Now here's Fancher. Gets it into the hands of Conley, the tight end, and upended there. It's a cute little play because the, <laughs> as the quarterback rolled out, it seemed as though like he was going to run it, but he ends up throwing it. Third down three. Give it to Ali. And trying to muscle his way for yardage. See where they spot it. And that play on Conley, Isaac Duffy made a great play there to slow him up. So it's going to be fourth down here. And it looks like Marshall's going for it. This would be a big stop if you Albany could make it. Looks like he got a blitz coming. Blitz on the outside. Ali breaks it to the outside. Speed to burn. Risk versus reward. <laughs> and Marshall goes in front for the first time tonight. I would make the case that that is an example of a scouting report. There's the blitz on the outside. He runs right by it. There's nobody there. 30 yard dash to the end zone for Rasheen Ali out of Columbus, Ohio. Feel great for that young man after a tough season he had a year ago. Finished strong, but missed so much. Veerhoff's point after. And he delivers. That's a player. You know, Ali, he, uh, when you come off of something like that, you really, really want to have a good hard season, and he's going after it. Back to Huntington in a moment. Well, the We Are Marshall chant unfolding here inside Jones Edwards Stadium. We welcome you back here to our ESPN Plus coverage of Sunbelt Conference football, Marshall, and the University of Albany meeting up for the first time ever and outstanding showdown between these two. Big battle in the first half. U Albany with a field goal to take a 3 0 lead at the break. And now here in the fourth, Marshall finally in front for the first time. Yeah, nice kick by Cameron Lake. So the U Albany back with the ball. Here's that drive, Carl. Yes. This was Coombs a special ball. Drive. Caleb Coombs. A couple of nice catches there. To the left, then to the right. I tell you, when, when you're going at that tempo, 
it just it just makes you uncomfortable as a defense. You're not set. You don't feel like you're set yet. And the ball snap, ball's out. Somebody's got it. Somebody's running. It's tough. And we put it into the hands of number 22 to finish off the drive. Six plays, 54 yards, two and a half off the clock. And now you, you see if Jason Seymour and the defensive coaches want to dial up some heat here. Well, the question is going to be now is you, Albany, are you going to run the ball or are you going to try to throw it? If you're throwing it, you've got to complete it. If you run it, you've got to be successful. Marshall's job will be to shut that down. Harkins, you saw him head off there. He's been dangerous at times tonight. Poffenbarger back to pass, drifting, throwing, catch made there, and then a good tackle made by Stephen Dix as he takes Waddell down to the ground. That looked like that had some opportunity to be a big play. He made a great play there. Dix out of Orlando. 45 tackles. He was a Rivals freshman All-American at Florida State. Hoffenbarger finds an opening and it's Dix again. That D line is is sucking up the offensive line and he's making plays. They're playing zone in the back on the back end of that and they're just making plays now. That front that front four are making plays. That's how you teach it. Yep. <laughs> Wrap him up and yep. take him down. You have, two, tackle. you have two players on this Marshall team on that comeback player of the year watch list. Well, we saw Ali dash 30 yards for a touchdown. Then on this defensive series, Dix, who's on that list, comes up with big defensive plays. And Marshall on special teams here, and the flag comes out. Oh, I Mestula goes down. He went for the block. Running into the kicker. Defense. That foul will be the climb. The ball will be put in play at the dead ball spot. First down, Marshall. I'm not. I'm not really sure what what happened there. Greg Gattuso. It's a 44 yard punt. No indication now our stats here. We could not hear the call being made on the field. Nonetheless, Marshall has the football, and here's Jaden Harrison with a nice catch and then driven out of bounds. And most of these passes that they're throwing are just quick passes. It's catch and throw. And they're getting five, six yards every time. Amir Hall with the stop there. Second down play, give it to Ali, and a good job there defensively. Elijah Hills, 6'2", 281-pound junior, read that one perfectly. Yeah, and it looked like they were in man-to-man, -man, but I don't, I didn't see anybody blitzing in on it, so they, they made that just from up front. That makes it a third down and seven situation. Fancher goes to the air, looking, and is picked off. Right into the hands 
of Amir Hall. And Hall will be taken down at the 46 yard line. Big defensive play for you, Albany. I think that may have been the, the, a, a bad read there. Another look here, Carl. Yeah, I think he just put that up there. I don't. I, I, I'm not sure. And he wasn't. There wasn't even any pressure, so I'm not sure why he put that ball up in the air like that. Coming up on ESPN Plus, we got more women's soccer headed your way tomorrow at one o'clock. The Herb women's soccer squad will try to stay unbeaten on the season as they welcome the Gardner Webb Bulldogs to Hoops Family Field. Then after a road trip to Pitt, the men's soccer team will take to the Pitts Thursday at Hoops to go up against the High Point Panthers. That's at 7.15. Be sure to log on and watch the herd along with all of the other programming you'll see only on ESPN+. Plus. So after the interception, Poffenbarger and company go to work here. And Poffenbarger shoots it out and has his receiver. And that's Carter Moses. Moses, the tight end, his second catch of the season, had a catch of 21 yards in that win over Fordham. Tight end matchups are always challenging for the defense because usually you, you're stuck with a linebacker which doesn't match your that tight end skill set. Moses with the first down yardage. Offenbarger unleashes and fires that one where no one can get to it. Good pressure with Marshall up front. And in this offensive line for the University of Albany, three of five starters returning to help protect that gentleman right there. I think they've done a good job today. <clears throat> Second down play. From the Marshall 33. Larkins gets the call, and Larkins is a handful inside the 30. Takes two or three guys to get him down. And they list him at six foot 224, graduate student. But he is thick. He is really thick. And he's just moving his feet. Third and four out to the receiver and closing nicely there for the thundering herd is J.J. Roberts. They got it into the hands of Easton, who's had a big night. But J.J. Roberts, his first game with the thundering herd after coming back home from Wake Forest, and he makes a big tackle there, brings up fourth down. This is one of the rare plays that that I think Marshall has made on this particular play. They've been relatively successful with that play. Fourth down and three. Hoffenbarger looks like man to man. It looks like everybody's covered up. He's got everybody set. Back to throw. And a big hit yep. as he released that. Keyshawn Brown came through, and boy, Poffenbarger, he's a tough customer, and he took a big lick. Yeah, and, and you, Albany, um, the sidelines, they were a little upset because there was a grab on the uh, outside. So Marshall takes back over the football. 7 7 to go, up by four here on ESPN+. Plus.
Back here inside Jones C. Edwards Stadium, 21 17. Marshall with the lead. They had the football pressure packed situation and they brought pressure. Again, they, they are enjoying the idea of bringing pressure because it's forcing them to throw the ball quicker, and that's usually not what they want to do. Cam Fancher fakes the handoff to Ali. Great grab out there by Chuck Montgomery. Marshall has found their tempo. I think early in the first half, not until the second half, they ended up really finding their tempo. First down catch by Montgomery. He is now five catches, 65 yards, had that 19-yard touchdown reception. New set of downs here for Fancher. And once more, Montgomery and number 10 with the catch. And then steamrolls his way down the field. They're shifting, putting the tight end out. And, and that tight end, there you go. You're getting a big block there. Springs it. Good design play. Back to back first downs. Marshall now with 19 in the game. 17 for you, Albany. Montgomery in motion and now give it to Ali. Ooh. Ali. <laughs> He, he was, yes, you talk about footwork. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying. Amir Hall brought him down. <laughs> it doesn't take much with this guy. No, it does not. And he he barely got a hand on him. I think I think maybe it was Ali, just the great move the <laughs> yeah. guy took, took, <laughs> took him off his own off. feet. <laughs> Seven yard pickup. Second and three. Holler with the snap. Fancher keeps and goes to Conley and the tight end. Stiff arm first down and takes it to the 20. A 17 yard gain. Cade Conley has made his presence felt here tonight. One of the things that a lot of young players don't realize, especially at receivers, you look at this play and you watch the receivers block it. That matters. That's what's helping him get extra yards. That's critical. That's teamwork. So Daryl Simmons there, number six, staying on his man there. Another first down for Fancher and company. Fancher hands to Ali. Ali to 17 for game three. Stop. Ethan Payne has checked in. Ali will take a break. Make credit to that offensive line. Those guys are just down in the trenches working hard. Both offensive lines here in this game. Defensive fronts, I mean, the battles that go on play after play. Ethan Payne in trouble. Down he goes. A.J. Simon, who had three sacks a week ago. He's on that leadership council we talked about, and one of the team's leaders coming up with a big play right there. That's a huge play. That puts a lot of pressure on this, on this third down. I'm going to make a guess, though, early that uh, Coach Huff will probably go for it on fourth down if they don't get it. Well, they split everyone out. Empty formation. See what they do to it. Wide right and left. Ali's out wide. All those skilled guys get it into the hands of Brian Robinson. Maybe one block Moore away. Makes a quick dash. Timeout, Albany. 
It is their first of the half. Good blocking. Yeah, just, just got him. Well, we have the kicking unit out there. We've got a break in the action here. 21-17, 232 to go here in Huntington. Reese Bierhoff has three extra points in this game. Looking for his first field goal of the campaign. And the kick, they may have gotten a piece of it. Block. I believe it was Elijah Hills who came in and blocked it. This is something that you do not want to have happen. That they press the middle. They were a group of guys. They moved the line of scrimmage. So now, if you are you Albany, you have an opportunity here. You trail by four. If you are Marshall, tell that defense to clamp down. They can keep playing the way they've been playing. Reese Poffenbarger back to work. Low snap. Oh. Intended for Levi Wentz. He has to catch that ball. He has to catch that ball. That hit him square in the hands. And he was open. Native of Pennsylvania. Looks like man to man. <clears throat> Another incomplete pass. Marshall now bringing in some fresh bodies. Owen Porter, Sam Burton. Paquez legs, Isaiah Gibson all gonna make up that front wall. That man to man was very tight coverage across the board. They didn't have anybody open. Third down play. We got a nickel back in. Hoffenbarger lets it fly, and I think that catch will be out of bounds. Yeah. I think he did hang on, though. Man, what an effort he got, there. He got a hit. He got hit, too. And birdie. Tremendous effort by Birdie, and in just solid pressure and solid coverage. You, a quarterback, you're looking at that. You're trying to get the ball out. You're just throwing it. He threw it and ducked. But he threw it on the, on the line. Fourth down play. Hoffenbarger only to take off it. and now will throw and a catch is made. And a first down. They had a three man rush and were playing, they played zone. They didn't get any pressure and. Easton made the grab for the first down. See, there's your three men, so he's got plenty of time. Guys finding opens in the open spots in the zone. Put the football at the 35. Hoffenbarger finds Waddell. And Waddell just shy of first down yardage. Gained nine there. And got out of bounds, which is key.
Offenbarger, great catch across the middle. They're placing trips up top and leaving a solo receiver down here and making it a man-to-man -man matchup down here, and that, that's a tough situation. Julian Hicks making a grab, had two catches last week. Transfer from Akron. Trips again up top. Offenbarger slings it out. J.J. Roberts with the tackle out in the flat as Wentz made the grab. That's a good throw, good catch. Got him some yardage, good tackle as well. Offenbarger sets up. Incomplete. Offenbarger. 22 of 38 in the game, 194 yards. TD pass on the night. And of course, had that big 54 yard TD run. Third and five. Marshall has two guys deep, could be cover four, could be cover two. Timeout. Marshall. It is their Marshall first has second. called It'll time here. 30 seconds. Under a minute to go in this game. Scoreless until six seconds to go in the half. <laughs> a field goal by U Albany. Greg Gattuso's team came out, marched at 75 yards to begin the second half, took a 10 0 lead. Marshall got it to 10 7. And then right back to a 10 point deficit at 17 7 on that big run we talked about by Poffenbarger. Marshall then answered with a couple of touchdowns to take this 21 17 advantage. Football at the 38. Poffenbarger, no room, goes down, ball's loose. Knew the ball was already down. U Albany gets back on it, but Poffenbarger goes down. And then it looked as though he had a little bit of time. It will be 30 seconds. They've lost his footing. Yeah. He stood tall for as long as he could. Yeah. The pocket was closing on yeah. him. Will Marotta there out of Collegeville, Pennsylvania, number 72. Do on that football just in case. So. Third and five, 43 seconds to go. Two big plays. They're going to need two big plays. Well, it's not actually yeah. no. Yeah, it's fourth down. Yep, it's fourth down. 43 ticks remaining. It's fourth and 16. Get it up there on the big board. Corners are deep. Poffenbarger, Eli Neal, oh. and Owen Porter takes him down. Well, Eli Neal shot through there, Carl, and then circling around, and there's Owen Porter <laughs> in the infamous celebration after he makes the big play, and he does there. This is, this is making plays when you have to, when it's important. And Marshall did just that. Now, two great defenders. You know, you saw number 24 fly through there. Yeah. And then Porter. Came from behind. Mitch Katsuso and his crew talking with the officials. 
What an effort by this U Albany team tonight. They played well. They really played well. I think when the second half of Marshall picked up the tempo, I just don't think they could hang, they couldn't hang in with it. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think the hand stayed a little long. And then the other players kind of got into it. A little pushing and shoving match. And there's a flag. And sportsmanlike conduct. Albany sideline. 15 yards. First down. And the Albany sideline hit with an unsportsmanlike penalty. That won't help you. They played a really, really solid football game all night long. Well, Marshall heads to Greenville. North Carolina to meet East Carolina next weekend. You Albany, they will fly to Hawaii. I'm wondering if we can get a flight of <laughs> we can get a flight with them. <laughs> and time is going to tick away here. Season opener number three for Charles Huff. And he is now three and zero. Oh in season opening games. He meets Greg Gattuso. And again, just an outstanding effort by Coach Gattuso's crew and certainly a spectacular comeback by Marshall in this game. Good, good game by both teams. No final thoughts, Carl. Well, I tell you what, I thought Marshall's tempo mattered. They, they found it when it mattered. It was in the second half. I thought they were a little bit off in the first half, but the second half, they really brought it out and made it put themselves in a situation to win the game. So Marshall is 1-0 and on the season. U Albany falls to 1-1. One and one. A lot of celebration going on here. Fireworks display. <laughs> well, great job by our crew. And for Carl Lee, I'm Mark Martin. We say so long from Huntington, West Virginia. All events airing on ESPN Plus are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. Tonight's game has been a presentation of ESPN.